hello welcome back to my kitchen this is foodie and training and today I am going to make a bison with ground sausage meatloaf so let's get started by going over my ingredients first thing that I have is two eggs I have a fourth a cup of brown sugar a large heaping tablespoon of minced garlic one chopped medium purple onion or red one cup of julienne carrots six ounces of tomato paste two tablespoons of Dijon Dijon mustard. I have two cups of oats, one sleeve of Zesta salted crackers, and a fourth a cup of uh, dried potato flakes. And then I have two pounds of ground bison and one pound of ground country sausage yummy right <laughs> so let's get started to start you need a nice glass of red wine <laughs> I can't cook without my red wine <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is put my ground bison and my ground sausage in my mixing bowl here put this over in the sink much easier to cook when you clean for, with yourself for yourself as you go and I forgot to mention we need salt and pepper to taste and I use fine sea salt is what I use I'm just going to put in a, a very healthy pinch I love salt and then I've got coarse ground black pepper I'm going to put in a little of that as well. And then looking over here at my ingredients, I forgot to share two more. We need ketchup, and I'm using Heinz tomato ketchup. And we need Worcestershire sauce as well. Ooh, my bottle apparently is leaking. Probably because my cap wasn't on tight. <clears throat> We've got that in there with my brown sugar. I'm just going to pick up some of this and I got clumps so I'm going to break that as I go if I can. I've taken my rings off because I'm going to be doing all of this with mixing all of this with my hands and I don't want all of that stuff in there. So all I've done is made just put in a good little pinch of my brown sugar and I still have quite a bit of it left here I'm gonna dump in my carrots my chopped onions my minced garlic my hands are clean I've washed them before I started all of this <clears throat> now I'm gonna put in about half of all of my dry ingredients here I'm gonna break one of my eggs I like my eggs at room temperature you can decide to do it however you choose now I'm just going to start mixing this together
And make sure you get your bison and your sausage mixed very well. Bison has very little fat in it and it tastes incredibly well. So that's the reason I always mix in the ground sausage and I do it at a ratio two to one with bison to sausage. That way I have enough flat fat for the flavoring. And then you can also, while you're mixing, you can also see the fat in the sausage versus the bison because the bison basically has none. So you can see when your fat is evenly distributed. There's a big chunk of my brown sugar. <laughs> Let me... Kind of crush that up there with my fingers. <laughs> now I'm going to <clears throat> mix in the rest of my dry ingredients. Let me find my spoon here. Because now I want to put in about half of that Dijon mustard. I'm also going to mix in a little bit of the tomato paste as well. Not all of it, just a little bit. Maybe a teaspoon, tea, or tablespoon, tablespoon and a half there. I'm going to bring in my Worcestershire sauce. And I eyeball this. I'm just going to splash in about two teaspoons, two and a half teaspoons. I'm going to bring in my other egg. Crack that in there. And now we're going to mix this all together. Got a little fruit fly running flying around here. It's driving me nuts. I've got some bananas over there in my fruit bowl that I'm trying to get several days old so I can make some banana bread with. So I think that's about time to make, especially since I'm seeing a fruit fly that's just freaking driving me crazy right now. Okay, that looks very well mixed now and looks good. So, next thing I'm going to do is just, I'm going to go wash my hands, set this to the, uh, over to the side, and I'm going to come back with the rest of the ingredients that I showed you, and we're going to whip up a little glaze. Okay, with the glaze, I've got about a fourth a cup of ketchup. I'm going to bring in the rest of my Dijon, Dijon mustard. Obviously, that's difficult for me to say. Just a brown spicy mustard is basically all it is. The rest of my brown sugar. I'm going to add a smidgen of salt. 
and a couple of dashes of the Worcestershire sauce. That obviously is leaky. <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta clean that up. My OCD makes me clean that up. And we're just going to mix all of this together really well. Okay. That looks good. That looks very good. Now we've had our meatloaf mixture off to the side resting for a few minutes while we did that. So I'm going to pull that back over. I'm going to set my glaze off to the side for a moment. I'm going to bring in my meatloaf pan. I use a dark glass pan and I have two because I have more than enough here for two meatloafs. And what I'm going to do is just pull this out of my bowl and start placing it into my loaf pan and then just press it in to form the loaf. Press it in there good. And then the rest, which is, which will be a smaller meatloaf. I tend to always make enough for two because my mother's favorite food is my meatloaf, so I always make enough to where we all eat what we're going to have for dinner, and then I take leftovers to my mother who lives in a retirement home here close to me. And sometimes if she gets enough of the leftovers, she will share. So this one's much smaller so my um, thought process on this is is that this one I will take take the whole one of these to my mom so I'm gonna bring over my glaze that I've made now and I'm gonna put some of this on to I'm gonna put it onto my meatloafs and divide it between the two and this, just kind of spread that out because this will all soak and cook into the, my loaf. And it's so yummy and it doesn't create a whole lot of fat which is always good <laughs> when you don't create a lot of fat with meatloaf because they do create a lot of fat if you've ever made a meatloaf you know that <laughs> but this one has an incredible taste they taste so good so we've got that on there now and remember that we still have our tomato the rest of our tomato paste left and ketchup but what I do is that I'm going to put this in the oven and I'm going to bake at 350 degrees and I'll let this bake for about 30 minutes and I'm going to pull it then I'll pull it out and I'm going to put tomato paste. I'm going to spread the tomato paste across both of these and then I'm going to let it bake another 15 minutes which would be 45 minutes total and then I'm going to put ketchup 
all over the top of it. And then I'm going to put it back in the oven and let it bake 15 to 20 minutes longer. And then it will be good to go and ready to eat. So I will come back after we've got this going and baking and show you what it looks like. And we'll have a taste test and tell you how wonderfully delicious that it really is. So thank you for stopping by. And if you would please, and if you're enjoying my videos, please subscribe and share my videos and give me a thumbs up. And maybe leave me a comment if you would, whether you would like to try this video, this recipe, or what other recipes you would like to see me do. So take care and come back to my kitchen really soon. Bye.